Hello, welcome everyone to the fourth video of the Kotlin Flows playlist. And in this video, we will see Collect Latest, which is a very common used one. So first of all, let's just create the example, which is simulating searching for something. So the user types some queries to search in a database or an API to search for something, for example. So the first thing is just create a list of the results we can get when searching. So results is a list simple list of strings basically so the first one is a result of, for Kotlin and then I'm just going to copy this two more times and then result for Java and the result for let's say Swift so the user can search to get the result of Kotlin so let's say this is the a documentation of Kotlin this is a documentation of Java and this is documentation of Swift now, uh, we want to have a function that returns a flow that performs that search. So it's a fun search flow. That is a function that returns a flow of type string. Because we want to get one documentation of one language. And that is a flow. Let's say the user want to get, of course, the latest thing they search for. So let's say the user types Scotland and then they immediately removes that and types Java or they immediately remove that type something else so they type really fast and we want to get the latest thing they, they stopped in or the latest thing they want so for example if they just type cut then we can get a documentation of something is that is called cut but they actually now typed lin so they they completed the the, the word then now we want the latest thing which is the entire word which is Kotlin. so we don't want to give them everything that they typed but just the latest thing where they stopped so here we will emit say result uh, zero oops, zero right here and then we delay for let's say 500 milliseconds and then the result one and result two so we get a result for each language now let's collect this flow in a run blocking block and so we say search flow dot first of all we want to see what we actually get so dot for uh, i mean on each and then we're just going to have a log to print what we have tag and say we got uh, it to make it more readable we're going to say result right here so we get or we got a result and then let's just collect this dot collect so normally without actually using collect latest and we'll just print again what we have here but now let's say we want to process the result in our ui for example updating our ui in that thing that might take let's say a delay of uh, 100 milliseconds or a second so to hide the progress bar and to hide if we have any anything that has to do with the search but then just after that second we want to actually show them the results so again result here and then let's say the final result is our result so result oops i need to have this inside to little brackets like that and now using normal collect we'll actually collect all the values or all the documentation for each language so user search for kotlin and then they immediately search for java and then they search for swift and we'll get them all so let's see that kotlin so yes so we got kotlin and then the result is kotlin we got java the result is java we got swift and the result is swift now the problem with this, as I said, the user wants the latest thing. We don't want to show them all of this, but we only want to show them the latest thing they search for. So to solve this, we're going to use collect latest. This is exactly why this function exists. Now, even though the user typed Scotland, they typed Java, but the last thing they wanted was Swift. And so we will give them Swift. So now let's run the app after we are using uh, collect latest and see what's going to happen. So we got Kotlin. So we did search for Kotlin. We did search for Java. 
We did search for Swift, but the final result they want is Swift, and that's exactly what we give them. So this is why we need to use collect latest. I mean, this is just a simple example for you to understand. In fact, it's a bit more complex. If I used a mutable shared flow, I would make it more clear how this actually works. But that's in another video, which is the next video in which I will actually get to see with you uh, state flows. And then in the last video of the playlist, we will see uh, shared flow. So there are two more videos in this playlist, which are about state flow and shared flow. So see you in the next video and bye.